Right, so quickly to the papers now. And uh, two cops arrested with four... Uh, f with four others for their role in the killing of policemen. That's the Daily Graphic story. Also, President hands over 500 vehicles to schools. Daily Guide says Akufuado Mahama fights for Accra votes. Akufuado Mahama fights for Accra votes. Two cops, three others arrested, captured by the Ghanaian Times newspaper for armed robbery, murder of police man. That's the Ghanaian Times newspaper. BNFT says this morning that BOG must push banks uh, consolidation and that's the quote in the UMB CEO and also Professor uh, Stephen Adai says don't run from taxes don't run from taxes the story we would look at this morning the final newspaper says save CPC from collapse workers appeal to shareholders and President Mahama presents 500 vehicles all right, so that's captured by all the papers. My final paper for the morning says um, it's actually maritime transport. And it says here yeah, the Temaport performing efficiently. All right. Let me introduce my guest to you this morning. We have Kwajo Owusu Efriye, otherwise known as Sir John, who is a former general secretary of the NPP and a lawyer. Good. Thank yes, you. Yes. yes. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Good to have I, you join I, I once was. You were. So you I'm, once were. Always a lawyer. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> 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 All right, then. And also, we have the uh, Greater Accra Regional Chairman of the NDC, Mr. Ade Koka. Good morning to you and welcome to Thank the show as well. Thank you very much. And um, Ni Ama Akonfra is the General Secretary for the Convention People's Party. Again, good morning to you and welcome uh, to the show. Pleasure as well. to be here, Bridget. All right, a then. Right. Um, just quick comments. I know uh, yeah. you're wearing black, and when we're off, I asked you. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, the. I, I, I am bereaved, but... Um, okay. So Monday, we will be at um, Ono, oh. where Ade, Ade is expected, uh, and he is also expected to be. Okay. But it is a one week. Okay. So I don't expect um, people to be there to mourn with me. Mm. Okay. But those of you who are interested in mourning with me, you can give me your donations now. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm taking. laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Um, yeah. Mr. Adif, we heard of the president's mother's passing yes, uh, yes, this morning. Uh, yeah, last night. Oh. Uh, well, we had the news this hours, morning. Early hours of uh, oh, this don't. morning. Uh, yes. Oh, uh, really? We yes. want to, I want to take this opportunity to wish him uh, two uh, condolences. Sure. And that uh, uh, it's, uh, it's a very sad moment. Losing a mother is not, it's not easy. But I know that he's a strong man. You take it in a stride, and then life must move on. Today, okay. uh, we will spend a, this morning paying a courtesy call to uh, pay condolences to him. Does that mean it stops the today? Will he go no, around? No, no. We start very late. Okay. Uh, we're going to start after uh, we've all gone to pay uh, our respect to him. Okay. Yeah. All right then. Mm. All right. Any quick comments, and then we'll move on to the stories. Well, there. Yeah. Well, all of us we want to say, yeah. send our condolences okay. to, all right, to the president and the family. Our sympathies, obviously, are with. Uh, with the family. All right then. So let's quickly to the story. We're talking about the president, so we're going to stay on that. And um, the story actually has been captured by all the papers. In fact, TV3, if you go to our website, 3news.com, you'll get the story as well of the over 500 vehicles that have been presented to educational institutions. And one of them, uh, community days in our high schools, are expected to receive that. So when you heard the news, I mean, you saw this happening, what was it that you know, went through your mind? And I want to believe you are happy. Well, I'm, I'm happy for the various schools that got some of these buses. Okay. Um, but this, this is not the first time that, uh, you know, buses are being presented to schools. Okay. Um, I believe that from Cromer's time, these things were there when the, you know, GET schools were built. And Cromer provided almost everything that were needed to boost uh, education. And so, also, we traveled down there in memory lane to the first time sure. when these, you know, schools were presented with buses. So, it is not nothing new, you know, uh, 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 seriously. But, but you, you, we, you know, even at this stage, mm -hmm. where the buses were going to go to the schools. And I, I read a story or two, uh, two days ago, and even yesterday, schools in Greater Accra, Gans South, where students are sitting on, on, uh, 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 on blocks being taught and, and, and the schools in Greater Accra, schools that the children you know, attend 
are, are roamed with these bamboos and others. And, and then I asked myself that in this day and age, when I thought that um, uh, we've rid ourselves of uh, 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 you know, schools and the trees, and, and, and in, the, in, the, in, the, in the center of Accra we have this, and then in the northern regions where we have no feeding grant having gone to these schools and schools students have been sent home. Then you look at it, you know, against the background of 500 buses being sent and some motorbikes and so on and so forth. Then you begin to ask whether or not, you know, what the, the president's priorities are. Yes, it is good that buses go, but so also must other things that go with education to strengthen, you know, uh, the institution. It, 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 I mean, I, I, I also provided. And so you look at you know, the, the sad story of schools in the three northern regions where people are so, so angry and, and pe people are threatening even to remove their children from schools and then to Great Accra and elsewhere where, where people, and even the north, there was one school where, where it was raining, the cameramen were there, it was raining, they all had to run to the, uh, I think, uh, you know, cages, you know, room. All these, uh, th then you ask yourself whether or not education is properly in the hands of the, uh, the, 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 the NDC. And, and that is why Nanako Fado's policies on education is better. You know, well, what, so, are they? So, what are they? What are they? Oh, of course, you know, what we have said is this that not only do you have to provide, you know, buildings, because buildings alone do not constitute schools, sure. but you need to provide, you know, buildings as well as, you know, things that go with the teachers, teacher first policies, and then the other infrastructure that teachers might need chalks. Uh, 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 and books and, 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 and such things. It is that that makes a school. It is not the building. And I think that the priority of so, the government so is to put that buildings and call it a school when you don't have what it takes even for, 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 for students to, 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 to learn. I Teaching materials are not there, an, an aids are not there. And so we, we would um, uh, ensure that t teaching materials and learning materials are all there for people's and uh, teachers to use. Okay. That is a school. A school is not a building. Okay, right. and I think just, that, just a quick one, Sir John, on, 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 on the, on the, on this, just a quick one on, on this, on the schools that you mentioned. Mm. Most of the schools actually have like, uh, what is it called, computer library. They are well equipped, computer library. Most? And yes, and then one, the problem, the, the, the problem the TVT for us, I think we did a story recently was that some of the kids go to the school, mm. they had to walk long distances. So for some of them, if they receive the buses, they'll be quite happy with it. Well, who tells you that the buses are going to ferry the, the oh, schools? They mentioned them. No, mentioned look, them. I, I, I've been a student before. We know of these practical things. Sometimes even students will not be allowed to buy the school buses. They are going to maybe play football match and then the school, the, 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 the school they ferry them to the, the, the okay. place and bring them. Thank but you. it is not meant to go to Ono and other places to bring the students back to school. It is not meant to, uh, to do that. But at least have you seen the buses? These are pickups. Some of them are pickups. Most of them are pickups. <laughs> and you are telling me that the, uh, the pickups that are going to ferry the children from area to area to the schools. No. And, and right. I've seen them. Care, care. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Oh, 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 thank you. Oh, 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Jesus Christ. Me for you as well. And then. Yes, sir. We are laughing. For you as well. Educational institutions. Say good morning to your viewers, your team here. All right, then. And. <laughs> Certainly nobody will begrudge the a school having a bus sure. or having any additional transportation <laughs> that they can use, whether by teachers, by students, etc. Sure. But the issue is this. What is happening in our educational sector? Okay. The infrastructure of the vast majority of our, of our, of our schools is collapsing, despite the, the promises of building 200 uh, uh, new SHS, which we know is not going to be achieved. But what is happening in the infrastructure of our schools? 50% of our schools don't have toilets. 50% don't have water. So what are you doing when you signal 500 buses? What are you seeking to do? Are you seeking to tackle the fundamental issues that are, are plaguing children? We, as a party, the Convention People's Party, want a school which is friendly to children. We want children to have the best educational experience they can have. Unfortunately, what we have in this country are children sometimes in classrooms which are dilapidated. They are in classrooms which have no furniture. Some have no classrooms at all, are sitting outside. Some are taking exams outside under trees. Mm -hmm. All of these issues are going on in our educational system. And this government, this NDC government, decides that the priority 
is to do show, <laughs> buy 500 buses. What will happen in the next month, in the next two? How will these buses even be run? Who is going to fuel these buses? Does, do the schools have budgets to put fuel in those buses? What is the system that they put in place to ensure that the transportation system for our education is properly managed, the buses are maintained, it's a sustainable thing, or are we going to have these gimmicks every time towards an election and you start bribing uh, uh, every institution in this country? This is what they did the last election. Buying buses, pickups, cars for their girlfriends, etc. Oh, yeah. Which bankrupted this nation. It's, it's a fact. Those small I-10 I cars, where did they go? But, where where but did they go? When, where, this where it? when this government parked ni, ni, I-10 ni, cars I in, front of, uh, uh, in front of State House, no, where did those cars go? No, no, no. Ni, ni, ni. no, 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 no. Redrawn. No. Okay, thank you very Let much. Let me say that. <laughs> okay. Certainly it's a fact that they bankrupted this nation towards the last election. They bankrupted, they emptied the purse, the coffers. They ate the meat to the bone. All right. And as a result, we are still reeling from it. They had to run to the IMF for a bailout. They are failing on that. Part of the uh, uh, remit is the suffering that we're suffering in the, on electricity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody in this country right. Thank is you. suffering. And yeah. you choose buses in a very gimmicky way, the way you've done Commander Sugar Factory. Everything is a gimmick <laughs> with this government. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Adikoka, yeah. just give us an understanding of you know, what went into that. and then we'll uh, it's, very, it's, very, forward, yes. it's very interesting that uh, my friend and of Commander Sugar Factory, which was uh, one of the edifices that the party that he claims to be the general secretary, our first president, Dr. Did, Kwam Kwam, did and then it, was, it collapsed under our own failures, and then we have revived it again. Okay. So I'm surprised that he wouldn't even pay compliment to that. You see, schools, since we started being an independent nation, schools have been built all over the place and to be continually be built. Population will continually grow. So it's a process that we have to go through. As you go, as you go along those areas where they don't have schools, government is able to provide them with schools. And that has been uh, like a... a, a, a Sir John said, President Kufo also came to build schools, hippie schools, with hippie fans. He was able to put up schools. Four, three bedroom, three classroom blocks and six classrooms. The schools are still there. Some of, those are, some of the schools have, that were built have become dilapidated. That is what we are rehabilitating. So the school that you saw at, at, at Greater Accra was part of your hippie schools, which we didn't build well, and we are now putting them right. You understand? Down the line. Yeah, we are putting uh, eight years down the line. We have we have we have built this school. Complaining. Go to go to uh, uh, Salvation Army, a Salvation Army schools, and you will see the kind of schools that the mayor of Accra, right, has has put there. The Millennium schools, right, where now they've got toilet, tea rooms, I uh, 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 classes, uh, classrooms, and all manner of schools. Go and see. When you were building your hippie schools, you didn't think about putting toilets there. That is what he's talking about. So your, what you came to do in eight years that you, you did not do well, that is what you are correcting. My friend was talking about electricity. I want Kwame Nkrumah to build a question, but the successive government that came should have added on. And the failure of that being done is why we went to do so, do so. So you should put the record when you are when you are talking, right, as politicians, when somebody does something that... When we were in school, we had buses. Okay. And the schools were able to fill the buses for us to go to various activities. So the policy that was used well to be fueling well this, please, 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 whether CPP or not, is Ghana. What happened was that we were able to fill the buses and go to, go to various uh, 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 functions. The same system that you said Kwame Kuma put in place has been, has been, has been modified. So the bus that are being given to the children of the school, you have enough well to run about. Look, we should stop knocking things before because of politics. We, 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 when, when we come to, we have to appreciate the things that various governments come and do. And then you add on, if you sit here and you are knocking a government, when you come, you also be knocked over the place. But so, isn't that how we have played the politics? That is, because, that, 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 and so it is really hard for... Just a moment. Just a moment. Just a moment. Gentlemen, I'm on the floor. Thank please, you so much. Please, yes. please, you, you, you will... I'm just land. interrupting yes. you a little yeah. bit. Just, Sometimes I'm sorry. With my flow. Okay. But just just a quick one. that We cause of what to appreciate when government actually does that. because why we that is why we should stop that. But the buses that we're giving up, they are not. They, the, no, because because if 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 
if I go the land that you are going, I can say a lot of things that you did that didn't do it well. But that's not I what you are here today. That is not what I've just given your hippie schools and your, hip, your hippie schools and your hippie toilets. No, no, you can't come in. Your hippie schools and your hippie toilets. What happened to them? They all disappeared. You saw you them. You came and we, 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 we saw the hippie toilet. You came and we saw oh. the hippie toilet. What are you talking? What are you talking? When you are talking, I kept quiet. Why can't you do that? Why don't you have to be patient? You started it. Be patient. When you are talking, I didn't say this. Mr. Adekoko, continue. Please, let me continue. Thank you. Hey, please stop. Your hippie toilets and your hippie schools. Mr. Adekoko, just stay on track. Thank you. Just stay on track. So the buses that the president gave. If you, if you saw the spread, it's all over there. Even private universities were giving some. Yes. Private right. universities. Private universities. That is the idea, right? That we are resourcing the, the, the schools to be able to function properly. The, the, the pickup are not for the students to write. It's for administrative purposes. So if somebody comes and sits here and doesn't even go and read about the essence of what was done, and they come and throw out inventives, then you are saying, I don't know whether you are reading or you, you people say we don't read, but you are not reading. But, but you are not read, if you don't read, you are the worst people who don't read. Exactly. You understand? You. So, I, so the, the, the purpose of the whole thing is to ensure that education, despite the problem, we know we have problems with education. All right. Thank it's you. When I was in school, I, I went to the Saddle. There were problems there. All right. Thank you. So Thank you very much. Not, Thank you very much. Mr. Sergio, before, quickly, before you quickly, even quickly, react, quickly. Right, before you react, just tie this into the question I'm about to ask you, that you mentioned that, yes, your government did some. Uh, did build school. You talk about the fact that you thought you traced it to Nkuma's era and it's been done. What it means is that, I mean, the deficit, the problems we have in the education cannot even be finished by President Mahama. Somebody else will have to come and continue. But, but yeah, it, yeah, I mean, yes. So, that, yeah, there true. may be school under trees, that there may be true. schools that, that are still true. under trees. But what, but, but what but, happened? But when you have a government that claims that we have removed all, you know, peoples, schools and the trees of, uh, are a thing of the past, they are gone, but that's not the truth. You know, then, then there's a problem. You know, uh, 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 whether or not the this government must be believed when it says things that, that, that they have not done. But like, like, like my, you know, my colleague was saying, yeah. just look at the capitation grant for, so for three quarters now, it are not gone. You look at teacher salaries, they are not gone. You look at even feeding grant, feeding grants, and that's the saddest aspect of it. And we have students all having uh, to come back home because this government cannot provide feeding them. So when uh, Ni says that we, are, we don't even know how the buses are going to run, he has a valid point. Because if this government cannot even feed students who are in schools, how could they provide you know, fuel for, for, uh, for these buses? But we are not saying that it is not good. It is a good thing, but the government must have its priorities right. Because if you have a school that comes home, the schools are closed, because there's no feeding you know, grant you know, there. You have a school where the capitation grant is not there. School feeding program has collapsed under this administration. Then there's a problem. And, well, and, and, and please, let me tell you, this electricity thing, you say you have computer built computer schools. One, the, the, the schools cannot even pay for the, the electricity that is being supplied right. to the school. Sir How John, they use okay. computers? Thank you. So, so it's Sir a very John, serious just, matter just a quick but let me, I mean, let when you talk about, about even motivation, if the pickup will go into administrative purposes, I mean, yes, there are buses, will go. It's a, a way of also uh, helping that teacher who finds themselves in the village. But who says and also it's another, not? Who says it's not? Be, because you mentioned teacher but the same motivation teacher, huge. The same one, teacher one moment, I'm not finished. I'm not finished. Thank you. The other question, point too, is that the last time that we did a, a research, mm -hmm. it's one over 1,000, I think, 600 schools that have been eliminated. Not all schools that have been eliminated mm -hmm. under trees. So if you say that it's not correct, that it, all the schools have been eliminated under trees, that's not true. I'm saying that that is what this government promised us. <laughs> that is what they told us, the lies that they told this country. No, no, no. Yeah, that's what they are saying, that they removed everybody. But uh, thank, uh, thank you for that. That your own research confirms that what we are saying is the truth. So it's a credibility matter. This government lacks credibility. So when it tells you of countries, then they cannot be telling the truth, you know, to the country. And that, that's the point that we are making. All right. So Thank they you. lack credibility and Ghanaians don't trust them. Yeah. All right. Uh, Thank uh, you. Uh, ni, 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 uh, same, same. You, you know, that the, I mean, the blame game does not resolve anything. That, you, you know, the, yes, Nkuma did his. We've had several governments, the Kofu administration. We have the NDC government also in there. The blame game will not resolve anything because even after President Mahama, we will still have deficits in terms yes. of education. So you have to spread the way you, you develop Bridget, the school. I don't think it's a matter of knocking or it's a matter of blame game. I think it's a matter of 
everybody knows what the problem is and what is the a government's plan to solve the issue. Every party is offering solutions. Okay. If you come and you, you say, this is the problem that we have, and we have four years to try and solve it, you need to then decide whether what you're going to do in that four years. What we're saying is, if you're not offering the solutions to tackle, nobody's saying that you should solve everything in education, but at least <coughs> the policy should be addressing these issues, just like housing. If you have a deficit of 1.5 million houses, and you have a plan which says we will reduce it by 100,000 every year, people can see that, yes, you're making those strides. 100,000 reduction every year. Now in our school system, for the last eight years, for the, since 1992, the infrastructure of our schools have been getting worse, deteriorating. The issue of you know, toilets and, and, and water in our schools has not been, been tackled. It's not improving. You can say it was 50%, is now 40%. Next year, it's going to be 30%. Nothing. So that's what we're talking about. We're not saying that if you add five buses, we should where, not, where we should not applaud it. Isn't, isn't it but the, well, we're saying they that they are, not, they are clueless about tackling the issues no, no, that I'm is not plaguing about the, the, the educational the, the, sector. The, I'm not even talking and about the NDC. Providing 500 buses is not the solution. I, I, no, my question actually has to do with in terms of the plan, the country, because we seem to be fixated on a party's manifesto. So we're judging based on that. And that would oh. keep happening because if we don't have an agenda as a country to say these are the number of uh, infrastructure that we want in a period, we will continue to have well, this problem. This government keeps getting the priorities wrong. <laughs> if you have a school uh, a system which has these problems, is your priority necessary to even go and build 200 new schools mm -hmm. or seek to tackle the fundamentals or the basics of what you have? And so continuously, it's about gimmicks. It's about making sure to win elections, no development. No proper development at tackling the fundamentals. Our children need to go to school in an environment that is healthy, in an environment that is friendly, so that they will learn. Okay. Because we know that the failure Thank in our you. school system is, is getting words, worse. We know we'll, that we'll this. We know that with BEC currently Mama, on. I'm sure we'll see so, on it. So, so you're having so, the final word so on if this. You have, uh, if, if you have a school that was built ten years ago with no toilet, and you come in today. And you come today and you come and build a school, three story with water facilities, with toilet facilities, with other ancillary added to it. Are you not making progress? You're making progress. So, what you are talking about, I just don't understand you. So, the policy is that our schools that were built so many years ago had no, had, the basics are that, the basics that you, 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 you are asking for people to stop going to school under trees. And yes, the government that is eliminating here, it didn't say that it has eliminated all, but has taken the steps, the relevant steps, to ensure that children who are going to school under trees. I started my school days under trees. When we started Radiant Way, where I went, we started. In somebody's bedroom, and eventually their deficits come. And that is what this government has been doing. Over the years, every government has, come, has made their priority to ensure that structures are put in place so that students have a better place, a better environment to study. So the, right. the, the point of yes, let us ensure that the physical structure give put in place. When you do that, then you add, then you add on to other facets that to ensure that a, 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 a serene environment is provided for them. And that's, that's the policy, so I don't know what you are talking about. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, all right, so uh, Daily Guide has a story. It says the Akofuado Mahama fights for Accra yeah. votes. And that's a story captured by Daily Guide here. And of course, it's also captured, you know, in other papers on the president's doing accounting to the people tour in the greater Accra region. And of course, today it's overshadowed by the death of his mother. Uh, but we will talk about, you know, what happened yesterday and also when Anako Fuadu went. Um, sorry here. So just a quick paragraph. It says, The Greater Accra region appears to be the battleground for the 2016 elections in November as the two parties have taken the region by storm, campaigning for votes. NPP presidential candidate Kufuadu, yes, uh, was at Choco in the Ablikuma South constituency while National Democratic Congress's candidate, uh, President John Dramani Mahama, began his tour of the region in Adam. Um, Mr. Henry, okay, so this time around, I'm starting with you, Niyama Akonfai, and I'll end with Sir John. So I'm starting really? with you. The question that. <coughs> <coughs>
would want to ask. Okay, just just a quick one. We'll, we'll, work, we'll work on your microphone in a bit. So just, yeah, Mr. Fio, I think then you have to start this one as well. Oh, really? <laughs> on, yes, okay. please, yes. So, uh, well, whilst we work on this Let me one, start yeah. with... On the yes, yes, but, yes but, the tour but, of Africa. Yes, uh, let me start with uh, the president's tour. Oh. Uh, yes, and then I'll, I'll come to, to that, that, okay, that, right, that you big go one, ahead, go ahead, the big fine. moment. Go ahead. Um, I, I, you know, when, when, when the uh, president began his tour in Accra, uh, for instance, mm -hmm. where he, he was telling them, I provided you with asphalt roads and so on and so forth, it is instructive to note that he appears to be living elsewhere. He, he didn't get it. The chief then told him that, yes, you may have provided us with this, but let me quote what, what the chief says. He says that um, he appealed to government to ensure that the roads in the traditional area are rehabilitated. In effect, in effect, just one, one gimmick, you know, of a road that is alleged to have been asphalted. But the chiefs and the people are telling him, go back into the hinterlands and see whether or not our roads are more trouble. <coughs> that is what we need. So the president appears to get it wrong, uh, uh, you know, in especially matters that affect the people, that the people actually need. It, 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 you know, so, uh, so that is why, what it is. And in another place, the chiefs and the people had also told him the same thing. While the president was touting about the fact that I've done this, I've done that. They said that, that is not enough. What we need is this that he says he appealed to the president to construct a health facility in the town as they travel to Bato, uh, uh, you know, in order to seek medical you know, attention. That sounds so like it, a legitimate appeal. No, no yes, it is, but it's it, it is a question of the priority. What is the priority of the area? And so, you see, the, the president and the NDC always like citing markets in a place that the people do not even want, <coughs> the people do not patronize, because they have their own priorities. And so it seems to me that... Which the markets did the, the people reject? Well, there are several markets that they have put up elsewhere that people are not using. And, and, and so I'm saying that it seems to me that the president indeed had egg on his face. When the people told him that what you say you have done is not what our priorities are, it's not what we want, and these are the kind of things that we want. Mm -hmm. And so it is important that you know, you, w w w at least before you do projects and, and, and these things, and like the, the bus, if you are going to the schools and ask what their uh, priorities were, what their interests were, perhaps most of the schools do not tell them we need this. And, mm -hmm. So their, their interests will be different. Okay. But coming to a yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, that was a wonderful, you know, uh, <laughs> I didn't begin. expect anything less. Oh, well, that, that was a wonderful uh, 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 beginning. No, right, Akufadu went to the fishing communities yes. and talked about petroleum. This is something that is dear to the, the heart of the fisher folks. And, and so it is knowing what these people want. That was, that was the difference between us and Don Mahama. He, did, he does things w w without consulting anybody. Things that do not, you know, the people do not want. But here, when we talked about pet petroleum, and it is instructive to note, Akufa went to Central Region, talked about uh, petroleum. The following day, the president says, I'll, I'll arrest, you know, uh, people engaging in petroleum. You know, and then to date, as we speak, not one person had been arrested. And so I could probably put this question to the future book. Have you had the president arresting one person? And there was a resounding no. And, and so it tells you that, you know, a Kufado is trusted, you know, to deliver on the promises that is given. And I was interested wait, wait, when the Kufado went to the, 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 the nursing, the Kolebu, and spoke to the, sure. you know, the people, yeah. and, and, and it was wonderful. Oh. We have to, time and time again promised that we will restore the nursing training allowances, the teacher training allowances. Look, I have heard this government say that, oh, we built cheap compounds, we built hospitals, we have done this, we have done that. And I, again, I say, the president equates buildings and they say that this is a hospital. But, the, but buildings alone is not a hospital. If you have a hospital, you need doctors, you need nurses, you need pharmacists, and so on and so forth. Okay. But this government puts up a building there that the nurses are still trying for jobs. They cannot uh, get employed. The nurses uh, you know, have come to Accra to petition and petition and petition. We have over 3,000 nurses out there crying. And yet we are told there are cheap compounds. Who works in those cheap compounds? Are they not nurses? So why are they not being employed? And so that is the difference. So look, this president you know, says things that, that are all artistic impressions 
you know, us in their so green the, book. The hospitals so, are so, artistic Oh, they are all artistic impressions. But the reason just, being that... Just the reason that, being that... You just said yourself that no, no, those saying, hospitals are going to no, employ... They will employ the no, doctors. But, no, but I'm saying... We, so, so it's I'm saying that, to expand you expand infrastructure. No, I am saying... I don't, I don't think you got it. I'm saying that buildings alone do not constitute a hospital until you are able to bring those that make it. And so if you have a, a building, and then, look, there was an accident in um, Kintampo the other day. Yes. So many people died because there was not an ambulance even to ferry the people to the hospital. And when they took them to the hospital, there were no ox oxygen even in the hospital. You call that a hospital? No, it's not a hospital, Mr. President. So he doesn't get it. He thinks that if you have a, a, an edifice there, then that will constitute a hospital. But I'm saying that if there were, if indeed it is true that they built cheap compounds as they've touted all over in their clean books, why are the nurses not employed? Why are the nurses still continue to come to Accra to fight? Why are doctors not being paid? And so and so forth. So it seems to me all right. that Thank this you. is a Thank you. that doesn't get it. So Thank I'm, happy, you very much. I'm happy that the Choco people saw Kufuado uh, in his flight. And, and, and Thank you. Thank you very much. You've and I believe that Akufa will be a great president. So Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, yes. I think you. you can I can come back. Uh, you can talk. You okay. can talk now on uh, what you make of. I mean, your CPP, your, the NDC and NPP seem to be fighting for obviously for the same vote. Um, he is touting the uh, things that Nane Akufuado says he will do if he's given the opportunity and practically doesn't recognize me what the president is doing. What, from where you sit, are you in any way swayed by any of the messages? Well, I have to say that if you look at it constituency by constituency, yes. over the last 40 years, coming from Ada, Sege, go the other way through Tama, Ashama, Lejo Kuku, or no, Krowa, Lejo Kuku, that they could open, also all the, 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 the constituencies in Accra over the last 40 years under these two parties. Yeah. What has happened? And it's not about, you know, whether MPP comes or NDC comes and tells us that they put some roads here, uh, we built some drains here, we built some gutters here. What fundamentally is happening in the lives of people in this region? Have their lives changed? Go to La or go to Lejokuku in Teshi and ask anybody in those back streets whether their lives have changed under these governments. Whether they've transformed their lives, what you will see is teeming groups of young people idle. Mm. No jobs. They are wondering when their lives, when they are, we will realize their dreams. Okay. So these two parties can fight all they like over greater Accra. We know that it amounts to zero development in Accra. Nothing in the lives of people. Under the CP government, we have moved systematically. We had built them a community one to ten in five years. We had moved to rebuild the whole of La, to transform people's lives, transform the environment, change their lives, using their local skills to build houses. Okay. Now, you know, the gimmicks has been going on under MPP and DC, and they are traveling from one place to another fighting over Accra. To do what? To do what for the people in Accra? When we know that every single community in this region, when you wake up every morning and you travel through those areas, the majority of young people are jobless. And they are sitting there waiting to be delivered. Under these two parties, it's never going to happen. Okay. That's what they need to realize, that no amount of politicking by NBC or NPP, jockeying for Accra, is going to deliver jobs and help them to realize their dreams. Okay. We need to come back to CBP government so that we can transform as we did, transform the whole of the community, build new communities, transform their lives, using local skills to build those communities, right. enhancing their income by mass industrialization, which marries what we have in Accra with industry to transform people's lives. What are we getting now? Gimmicks and gimmicks and gimmicks. 40 years of failure. Thank you. In thank greater you Accra. Much. Thank you, thank you very much. Mr. Adekoka as well, I mean, you can touch on the president uh, tour, uh, counting to the people tour and the projects that he inspected yesterday. And then you can tie that in with Nanako Fuadu equally, you know, going on the ground, going to a place like, uh, uh, what's it called, is it Jamestown, yeah. to also canvas for votes and promising them things. I see, he was in Jamestown, eh? Oh, I didn't know about that. I was promising, in, them, I, I, I promising them things. Yes. I was, we are, we are, we are, we are not promising them things. <laughs> well, we are doing things. 
Ah, you see, you see, you've started again. You you've started again. Oh, this is the best can, thing. Yeah. Can be, no, so no, it can be infrastructure. Real, 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 it's not for me. Uh, Those are things. They are things. I will stick by he that. He goes about. He oh, goes actually. promising, and we are doing it. Oh, He's promising. Yes. Yes. I'll give you a typical oh, example. Say John, say John. You are promising, and we are doing it. So keep promising, and we are doing it. He went to stand in London and said he's going to do ICT. We've, we've done the fiber optic. When you, when you go to Tema Enclave, we have we've got ICT, e-commerce. It's not ready. And then we are going to say, so we are going to promise ICT. We are doing it. Go and see it. Now, come to Adan. Adan had a very serious problem with their roads. That's true. From Kese mm -hmm. to Adan, Big Adan, a general who have taken about 20 minutes was taking about one hour. And the president promised to fix that road for them. He has done it. That is what you are saying that when you promise, you deliver. And then the chief said, well, the town roads. The contractor down is also going to the town roads that the, the, the chief <laughs> had asked of. Right? You come to Sege. What they wanted, the president had, and they were asked, it's like, it's like Tom Brown. When you do something, they ask for more. And that's exactly what happened yesterday. It was, it was beautiful because they've got, they've got something and they're asking for more. That is governance. The, 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 the wants and needs of people are insatiable. It is insatiable. No, but the uh, things that he talks about, I mean, yes. if you look at the things that he mentioned, that, you know, if you go to Adine and people are appealing for yes. more stuff. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, no, but Sir John says, you know, something like um, the appeals, uh, the chief appealing to the president to do what they need. Yeah, because that's in, an, because that's in an Adan, for instance, point that he raised. For the Adan, for instance, sure. a district hospital has been built there. Okay. So the people of Sege, you see, before they used to be together, okay. Adan and Sege used to be together, and they've been divided. It's, it's now a new district. So a new district, their, 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 their wants and needs are higher than a place like Adan, where it was already developed. So naturally, as you move along, as you put something there, you ask for more. And it, they have got every right to do that, and I applauded them for doing that. As we went along, they demanded, look, you've done this for us, but we want that doesn't mean that the president hasn't got their priority right. Okay. Now, certain things have been done, and they ask for more. So we move on. We move on. We, 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 the accounting tour is giving practical evidence of what people will say they haven't seen. We go to Sagleme, right? And 1,500 affordable houses have been built. 500 of them have been completed. And you want to, I, I'm sure your TV three cameras were with us, right? Some people came to start some housing, they never finished. Botema, they started, they never finished. Even before they were, before they had even finished some of them, they had even shared it among themselves. The, the Minister for Works and Housing had shared it, he had even taken stuff. Yes, they had shared it among themselves. Okay. Yes. So what are people talking? We have been, we haven't even shared it. We have, we have asked the people to come and buy it at affordable. So what are you talking about? When people are talking, they, they forget what they did, they did before. But they never the right completed thing. it, and they even so they sold plus the furniture, which had not even been put inside. So what are they talking about? You know? And then they say what? They are going to uh, uh, stop uh, per, 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 per what? Petrol is for petrol. That's when you it's have already been done. Plan. Runs All today. these things they that they are saying, there. as they go around, have been, like my brother said, promises. You know, we are doing the job. The president is on the job. He's get a crowd. He said he hasn't seen the rich hospital. You both, you are talking about nurses who have to be employed. If you don't put up the hospital, if you don't put up the facilities, how can you employ them? Now putting up rich as a major hospital is going to employ nurses. The same way who are in the house who haven't got jobs to go to. The university hospital is being built in. Uh, university of the campus is going to employ nurses and doctors. So if you don't put the facilities in place, how are you going to create employment? The, the youth that are sitting in the houses, in the, 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 until we are able to create an enabling environment and, and bring up the, like the commander sugar factory, where you think is not a good idea. Where there's no sugar to feed it. Friday, tomorrow, I'll give you sugar. 
tomorrow I'll give you Commander Sugar. The first sugar from Commander. I'll oh, give you it to so tomorrow. It's open. I said tomorrow I'll give you the first sugar from Commander. You and see, when, 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 when we sit in, Is it in maintenance when, or is it open? When, when we blind our... <laughs> when we put on some blinkers and refuse to see what is going on, the people there who are benefiting are seeing what the president okay. and the end is right. going to do. Right. And come Thank second you. 7 come November, <laughs> come 7 November, we will not share the affordable housing to ourselves, but we'll ask the Ghanaian who wants a place to put his head to go and be able to afford to buy it. All right, so we'll have to move on now well, to uh, some other. Uh, it seems to me Sergio, that Sergio, the, Sergio, Sergio, one, the one NDCs, uh, Sergio, one uh, maybe in Klaakuku, they don't get it. No, Sergio, uh, one, Sergio, uh, Sergio, not, one, not to give you a uh, quotation from what the president said. No, the, I, I think, I think it, it, it might be You just, cannot say that. No, Sergio, if you, you do that, I have to go around again. You cannot say that. The president's interest was that they were constructing a district court, a police station, a new district assembly. But they didn't that's how we said, John, and we ended with uh, 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 Ade Cook. All right. So we'll have to move on now to the BNFT. It says here that, you know, don't run from taxes. Professor Stephen Adai tells SMEs. And um, let me just read, you know, two paragraphs. So it says, former rector of the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, GIMPA, Professor Stephen Adai, has asked owners of small enterprises to desist from shunning from their, their tax obligations as it impedes the growth of their business. Now, addressing... Uh, proprietors of schools in a one-day seminar on financial management organized by the Christian community microfinance company in Accra. He indicated that any business that avoids taxes and thinks of expansion and improved productivity will only be living in a fool's paradise. I mean, this is something that is said to be like a culture of SMEs. Like, they just don't pay taxes. It's not like they do. And so it's, it's only it's, those who are not. in the formal tech term. Excuse me, what are you saying? Not true. It's it is not true, Bridget. Well, just, just let me just let no, me make the point and then you come in. that uh, a lot of people find themselves in SMEs. You know, some of them are doing uh, operating from their booths, and many others actually avoid tax. They don't like paying taxes. That's the, that's that's what it's found. No, that is not the reality. Uh, you know, if you went to the markets, those even who have wares on tables, they collect taxes from them every morning. So Professor Adair seems to me to be living elsewhere. He has never been maybe been to the market or <laughs> elsewhere, and therefore he does not see that. And but the, the, the point is this that they are being strangulated. The taxes are such as killing the businesses and collapsing you know their jobs, livelihoods. And that is what you are talking about. It's not that you know everywhere in the world, if you went to the Europe or the Americas and everywhere, taxes are things that you know people, if they had their own way, may may may, may, may run away way. from. You, you, you know, you understand. But the reality is that these small, uh, you know, SMEs and others, you, you, it, it will surprise you to know that when they come, they give you this ticket, this, this AMA, whatever it is, yeah, yeah. tickets, and, and these are all taxes. But the truth is that people don't even know what the taxes are being used for. The, today, in one of your news, news bulletins, felt a Kaswa market. And people are sitting by, they are paying constant taxes every day, and they are being suffocated under the felt, the stench, and that people cannot even go there to buy. And so, when people pay taxes, they must see that it is being utilized properly. Not when you have a government that continuously, you know, uh, uh, pilfer, you know, all the monies that are being collected through dubious, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, fraudulent, uh, you know, activities. So, they pay. But the taxes are such as that it is killing them. Don Mahama promised us in 2012 that when he was, in, if he, he got President the north, Mahama, if he gets the north, he, you, you, you add Mahama. it when it comes to it. He <laughs> was going to stop, he was not going to add President a single tax. And yet, what do we see? For the first time in the history of this country, the business community shut down shops for three days on end because they were trying for, you know, uh, exorbitant taxes on, on, on their necks. And, and we are talking about, you know, these SMEs. 
So you, you, um, you, you go to your ports. Every day, there's a new tax. Right. Every day, there's John, a new John, tax. Just a quick People one. Sir, but Sir, Sir John, so Sir John, no, Sir, Sir John, just a quick one. Sir John, you have to admit that the number of people who live in this country who pay taxes are small. I mean, everybody well, knows well, that. Look, right? we are talking about SMEs. No, no, These but, are but, people who are working no. there. Have, have so John, but do you recognize that? Do you recognize we have a tax problem? And that is you why you to need admit, to have policies do you that we admit have to extend, that we have a tax extend problem? It. Yes, you need to extend okay, it. It's about fine. policies. Just it's about leadership. We are not getting that kind of leadership from the NDC. That is the, the reality on the ground. They don't have it. It's a lazy man's approach to taxation. They go to the port. Just, uh, just a quick number, one. You know, people with taxes. Okay, you, thank you. It. Thank it's you. a lazy man's approach. And, and so we would come and reform these taxes. All right. I want you to have the... You will be the last person because he would have to leave at some point. Of yes, um, just on, on, you know, running away from ta taxation and SMEs, you know, to be responsible. For many others, I, I Sir John, uh, unfortunately, does not recognize that. Thank but you. there are many people who actually are working, but they don't pay tax. They're able to escape because they do, you know, direct, they go, they take their monies. And in fact, the last thing we mentioned, the issue of even actors and actresses, musicians, who earn and don't pay taxes. It, that's where to even lawyers, where he, where he comes from. Most of them don't <laughs> pay taxes. Who tells you that? <laughs> Most who of them pay cash. Yeah, so cash just, just a quick one I on this. Why, and how we can you, resolve why that? Why are you so today? Sir John, one moment. Who, 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 and, and on Mr. Deco, Mr. Deco, just stay so on track don't, and don't address, address the question yes, I see you about you know, right. how we can marry you are, that. You are right. And I, I agree perfectly well with the, uh, Professor Adai that is, is calling on people who are in businesses to, uh, to alive to their tax obligations. You are right. People, most people would really want to pay their taxes. And, 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 and it's very true that if, people are, if a, a lot of people are paying their taxes, probably the, the, the spread, if the spread is wise, is wide, we'll be able to ensure that the, 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 the tax levels are, are very manageable. But it is because if you look at the population of Ghana and the working population, you look at the, the tax that is being raked in, you realize that it's a few of us okay. that really are, are bearing the bread. That is why it becomes very uh, difficult and very, uh, we realize the hardship. So I agree that, and it all, he went further to say that if you are not able to pay your tax, you are not in a position to expand your business because okay. you cannot proper accounting to enable you to 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 to, to at least assess certain facets that to enable your your business to grow. So I mean, it's a, it's, it's an advice that is given to all of us and as good citizens, rather than sitting here making a, a lot of un, un, unfounded uh, 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 noises, it's better that we uh, 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 we tell our compatriots that look let us be alive to our civic responsibilities i don't i don't know the day we want water we want electricity we want roads we want schools all these things are as a result of government raking in certain amount of funds to ensure that all these things are provided okay that, that that's the essence of governance okay. i mean any government that comes in here i remember some few years people went on a uh, preku demonstration and said that the government is being the, the threshold, they would not, uh, uh, they, so, they, so they went to come, we, we moved on. where people died. Yeah, even when, they, when they came to government, the first thing was to drop the threshold, right? And then, and then, in, and then increase the VAT from a certain percent. So when the people are talking, they, f they seem to forget themselves. Like you okay, said, they'll yeah. go, they'll go, they'll continue. Let's stay on the SMEs. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm saying on them. I'm, I'm, I'm just, we don't have to go I'm, the same I'm, way. I'm, I'm just addressing, see, yeah, I want the people to know that when somebody is talking, sure, sure, and he's sure, talking out, sure. out of, uh, you, you bring him back to, that when he, when he had the opportunity to go on the Kumupreku demonstration, okay. when he came, those who, those who died, they never even went to see their families when they came, but they, they, I thought they were going to abolish the, 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 the van. They, they rather, drop the threshold for more people to be captured in and also to increase the 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 the, the, the fat uh, 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 this so don't come and sit here and give me some no no come and sit here and give me some some uh, some uh, uh, who, who so does, how do we uh, how do we how do you how do we what the, what what the, professor what doing professor doing is doing saying doing that, doing that all of us must be alive to our civic responsibility okay the leadership is there all of us should, should play a role to ensure that this country moves forward and stop this politicking. But what right. is thank you, thank you very much. Bridget. Nini, about the SMEs, you know. Yes, uh, well, I'll stake right. sure, specifically stay on. to thank you. SMEs. Thank you very much. I don't think it's out of order sure. for Professor Adey or anybody yes. else to remind uh, the nation about taxes. 
and of course we need to broaden Be our tax before net. Before you continue, so Mr. Adekoka will leave us because he did, you know, he has another program, and so we, you can excuse us. Right. Thank you very much. So and of course, yeah. of course, it's not uh, out of order. Yeah. Of course, we need to widen our tax net, but the reality we have in this country, because in many other countries, SMEs are the backbone of the economy. Okay. They are encouraged. They are helped, you know, and the local authorities in many countries see it as their, 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 their remit to encourage their local. Instead, some of the local authorities, municipal uh, authorities, want to go out all the time and harass small businesses, sure. trying to force them to close down rather than seeing them as, as uh, things to be encouraged. Okay. But the reality, the reality on the ground today is that this government has subjected uh, uh, small and medium enterprises to so much hardship in terms of uh, we've had doom so first of all many small businesses have had to invest in uh, generators for example okay. many now are in a situation where this electricity fiasco is crippling them and we can give many examples small businesses paying 600 cities mm -hmm. six months ago per month are now paying 3,000 4,000 cities Medium-sized businesses paying, let's say, 6,000 cities in electricity are now paying 22,000, 25,000. This is all result of government. The government is crippling the, the SMEs, and it's not that SMEs are refusing to pay taxes. It's not that they're not, uh, 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 they don't want to pay taxes. It's not that we don't need to widen our tax net. But what do we want the small businesses to do in this country? They are facing intolerable hardship. They've been crippled by, by stealth taxes those by this who are government. Escaping, who are outside well, of it, who I'm are saying escaping? that we need, to, we need to find a way of broadening our tax net. Okay. Of course, that's not the issue here. The issue is governments need to find a way that you can bring more and more people who are not paying taxes or some who are seeking to escape taxes okay. into the net. And it happens in many countries where people are being chased to, to, to seek to minimize tax avoidance. Okay. But in our country, let's look at the reality of what's happening with the SMEs. Okay. And so... Our focus should be how we're going to help them to grow, create jobs, and enhance our economy rather than focus on maybe their, their, their taxes, etc. Because they're already being crippled. Electricity, doom so before it, stealth taxes. This government has been responsible for massive increases in taxes. And it's on all fronts. The cost of living certainly has gone up for every Ghanaian. And in many countries, people aspire to prosperity. Okay. Everybody aspires to prosperity. Unfortunately, under this government, Everything they do delivers poverty to Ghanaians. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Uh, uh, Sejon, allow me to call you Sejon. Um, yeah, no problem. Um, um, please, can you then share with us how you think that, you know, with those, especially who find themselves outside of it, because especially those in the formal sector feel overly taxed. I mean, they feel like because they are, it's easy because their system is well streamlined. How do you think, what, what would you profess or prescribe as getting everybody else on board, since we have, I mean, successive governments have failed to even be genius about it. You see, the, I mean, if you look at it carefully, I don't, first we might define who you are saying are not paying, because majority of our people who are, you know, traders, petty traders, yeah. all of them, the initial assumption is that, oh, they don't pay, but they do, because I have seen them. If you go to the market every morning, they will come and give you a ticket. And then they take, they collect their money. They will come and give you. And there are so many of them out there, all over the country. So when people talk about several persons are not paying, I want the definition of those people that we want to tax. Because, and apart from that, these other built traders, these buildings, mm -hmm. you know, in construction, yeah. they live from hand to mouth. You know, for sometimes for two weeks, for, for one month, for three months, they have not had a job. They go one day to do some laborious work, they get 50 cities or 40 cities. And is it, is it that money that you say should be taxed? Or is this as tech persons, the uh, you know, uh, pension? Pension should be taxed. Is, is, is that the notion? Be, be, and, 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 and that is why the government, the president, was running away from that. Because, you see, they, they are at their wind's end. And that's why I was saying that it's about leadership. As for the taxes people are paying them, but what it is used for is the, is, the, is the problem. And again, you don't cripple them and then expect to get more from them. You either have to reduce the, the taxes so that those who you say should be in the bracket should be able to pay. But when you lump it on, on, on the few, or, or, as you put it, then there's a problem. So for me, 
let the government tell us who and who are outside the bracket. Okay. Is it the unemployed graduates that, that you have <laughs> in mind? Or is it the liberal who gets a job for one day and then for one week he has not gotten a job or for months he hasn't got a job? You want that person Thank to pay you, taxes? Thank you, Sir John. I have a problem our, time, with that. our time is up now. Ne, ne, just a quick run you know, to, to, wrap it, to wrap it up. Yes, on, certainly. Especially, think, you know, I mean, persons that we can even see. You talk well, about yes. actors, the industry. Yes. Uh, the arts can get, generate so much money and yet those people aren't even yeah. paying the, the tax. The net needs to be, to be widened, no yeah. doubt. But people also need to see that what they are paying, it's, 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 it's being utilized properly. And when you look at the local, local authority, for example, when you go out there in many countries, you go out on the street, you see on a daily basis what your local authority, for example, is doing for you, whether it's Lekma, Ladma, whichever district, whichever municipality. You think decentralization see, will help us? Look, well, I think that decentralization has failed. Okay. I think that our local authority system currently is not working. We need to scrap it. Okay. Because you go out there, how do the people of this city feel the effect of what AMA is doing for them? Okay. Do they see their grass being cut? Do they see their drains being emptied? Do they see the rubbish in Kaswa being, being cleared? Right. Do they see markets being cleaned? They see their environment choked with filth. They see their local landscape environment never being taken care of. They don't see even lights being replaced sometimes. So okay. you are, you are big, monies are being collected, but nobody sees and feels the effect. Right. Go to the Thank streets you. of New York, London, Paris, and you see every day what the local authority is doing for you because you see the roads being cleaned, the grass being cut, lights being changed, etc. So. Thank you so much. Let me say a big thank you to you. Kojo Uswefriye is the former General Secretary of the New Patriotic Party. Sir John, thank you very much for joining yes, us thank this you. morning. It's and a pleasure. wish you well, you know, as you go with your funeral. Also, well, we'll, to you. We'll go to see the president. Yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> and also, Niyama Konfa is a General Secretary for the Convention People's Party. And of course, you saw Mr. Adekoka, who is the chairman for Greater Accra for the National Democratic Congress. We discussed, you know, topical stories. Our condolences to the President of the Republic.